Hi, I'm Redneck Computer Geek, and today we're going to talk about this solar heater that's behind me. It took me about three weekends worth of tinkering around in order to build it. And basically, it takes some scrap plywood, a couple of pieces of strapping, and it turns a window like this into a solar passive heater. So you start out with these. You end up with a whole ton of these. About three cans of spray paint and a window. Right now it's actually producing about 93 degrees coming out of the top in a room that's maintaining about 70 degrees and it's currently about 54 degrees outside. So from 54 we're getting 93 degrees coming out. That's pretty good. The rest of the video is going to be me building it and then the end of the video is going to be me taking scientific video on what it's producing. Alright, so the basic gist of the situation is on this side there's going to be a piece of strapping put in and then on this side there's going to be a piece of strapping put in and then the entire center is going to be filled with soda cans and then from there on that allows the convection heat to go up through. One thing I would like to note is that if you're cutting plywood these Diablos, they're red with the Diablo symbol these Diablo blades are absolutely amazing. I very rarely do endorsements for any kind of product. Diablo blades most definitely worth every single cent. Hi, so we're going to cut off the rest of this and then we're going to put on our piece of strapping here and our piece of strapping here and then we're going to start working on filling it with soda cans. Hi, so now we've cut this down so it's the width of the window that we're installing it on and it's the height of the window that we're installing it on. We've now cut the slats to length in order to go on the edges and we're going to leave the end piece undone so that, that way when the cans are heating up on the front it'll be able to have an a vent in order to come in the bottom it'll have a vent in order to go out the top so we're gonna get these done and then we're gonna paint the whole back side and then we're gonna work on laying the cans in thanks guys so of course the whole back side of this thing needs to be black and Donovan's doing it in rust-oleum double cover um, this paints really cheap Usually you can manage to buy it for about $5 a can. We're hoping the entire project will be doable in two cans, which would be about 10 bucks, plus maybe $3 worth of returnables would be my guess by the time we're done. We'll count it out at the end and give you guys an actual quote. So this is actually 35 and a half inches across, and it's actually 70, nine inches tall and it's going to be covering the window that's right behind that so we're going to take that fridge and move it down and we're going to see what actual heat we can get out of that all right so at this point i figured out a couple of things first of all as far as removing the top of the can is concerned a rim removal can opener seems to work pretty good in order to take the whole top of the rim off and as far as the bottom is concerned a one and three quarters drill bit seems to work okay as far as a hole saw drill bit in a drill press. But in order to do the top, you've really got to hold on to it quite well because the cap itself, or rather the snap cap, is right in the middle where the drill bit needs to go. So if we hold on to it really well, we can hold it. And that goes through the snap cap. And that goes through the bottom. Now, I would like to state that this is most definitely dangerous to a certain extent. Should not be doing this without a shirt on or at least some protection because the bottom comes off and it's a flying disc of doom and it could cut you. It has come off of this cutting
piece at least a couple of times and flown off could potentially cause issues. All right, let's make the rest of them. So at this point I'm about halfway through drilling all of the soda cans and beer cans and I just wanted you to see the amount of absolute disgusting waste that it creates. And I've also discovered that these shards that come out, if they get in your skin they get infected really easily, causing these little rashes. So from now on I'm wearing gloves to hopefully keep from having this happen. Okay, back to drilling. So at this point we're gonna take and we've got just our regular construction adhesive. This was cheap, it was like two dollars I believe. And we got our caulking gun. We've got it figured out where we're gonna lay out the cans and you just lay them across and then you butt the next ones up against it. Some people go through the effort of actually putting glue around the top of the cans and then sticking them together. I don't really think it's going to be necessary. But one thing I'd like to show you guys is something that if I had known just how much of a pain this was, I probably would have done this using the rain gutter method that some other people have done. This is my example to you. This is an 18 pack of beer. This is how many cans I had to do in order to do just this one project. So with that being said, I think the next time I'll probably do the rain gutter method, but at least the cans were doable. So let's get started. We're going to get this popped open, we're going to start laying lines and then putting cans down. So in this really cheap spray paint, I'm definitely finding that it's going to take two coats at least in order to cover. So we're going to go back and forth a few times and see if we can't figure it out. Uh, if I had this to do over again, I definitely probably would have just stuck with the Bud Light cans because the blue seems to black out on the very first pass, whereas the red and white regular Budweiser cans and the orange ginger ale cans seem to be taking at least two or three coats in order to cover. The orange on the other hand with the Sunkiss seems to cover pretty easily so maybe that's another good option. Maybe the dark red is reacting with the black. So at this point in the build we've started to hit the actual testing point of the setup and I've got it laid into the window and we're gonna start actually seeing what comes out of it. Currently, right now, it is 9, 10, 9, 12 in the morning, and I bought one of these wireless thermostats. I'll pick it up here. You can see that it says it's 67.8 and 74.1. The 74.1 is actually the wireless transmitter that is up above the panel. As you can see I've laid the panel into the window. Now down at the bottom there is a half inch gap that is cut in order to pull air in. The panel lays solidly into the window and it actually is holding itself up right now but I'm going to be mounting brackets on the sides to make sure that it stays and our thermometer is right there and so there's a gap at the top and if you actually put your hand up here it's only nine in the morning and you can actually already feel the heat rising um, what we figured out the other day was that from that thermometer 
to this thermometer there is a 0.9 degree difference for some reason between the readings and what we also figured out was that if this thermometer is here and that the other one is on top of the heater that because of height in the room and heat rising there is a two degree difference so if we take that into account at nine now 9.15 in the morning, if you take 74 minus the 68, you end up with 6 degrees minus the 2 for the difference in the height of the room. So we've already started gaining 4 degrees out of the top. Alright, Speckles, you going to be cameoed? Alright, so we're going to keep working through the day and sometime around 12 o'clock I'll come in and we'll do another walk around test. Um, the problem that I have right now is that the window that I have it in is not actually a south facing window, it's actually a south, kind of south, south, slightly west. Um, so we're going to see how that works. Theoretically, it means that I should get more heat out of it during the afternoon hours instead of during the morning hours, which is what I want, is I want the temperature coming in during the afternoon. So we'll give you an update sometime around 12 o'clock as to what's going on. Hi, so, hi, so as you can see today, we actually have the sun coming out and it's coming down across and coming in and if you follow the line down here you can see it's just starting to hit the solar collector at this point just starting to hit that edge so right now it's about 9 15 you can see it's just hitting it we've got good clear skies today and we'll see what it really does um, as it is right now if we go inside So right now, good clear skies, we're at, let me lift this up, 9, 12, 68.4 and 75.4. So just starting to hit with the sun, we'll see what comes out in the next couple of hours. All right, so current outside temperature is about 54 degrees, 55-ish. As you can see, about half of it is being hit by direct sun, which unfortunately is due to the pitch of the roof. As you can see, my roof comes out. And there's the shadow coming down. So we've got about half of it heating up it's around 11 10 so we're gonna go inside all right so it is 11 08 and we're 68 degrees in the center of the house and producing 81.3 out of the heater So if we look directly at the heater, our temperature sensor is up there and we can actually feel the hot air rising out of it and you can actually feel the wood on the back side is actually warm to the touch. So I would say that's a pretty good test run. We're going to check it again about 2 o'clock and go from there. All right, well, this will probably be the conclusion of this video. Um, we're at the point where the sun is coming in almost exactly perpendicular across onto this, hitting it almost exactly dead on. So at this point, we should be at our maximum production temperature, which seems to be almost 95 degrees inside. So right now, we've got the sun coming out. And as you can see from this, the sun is pointing perfectly at it. So there's that. 
So we've got basically from here down with direct sunlight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows of cans that are getting perfectly hit. One, two, three, four above that. So we're really only producing it a little above two thirds. So I guess we'll have to work on that idea. Perhaps once there's snow here on the deck, it'll actually reflect up across, which has been one of the theories as to how well these work during the winter. We'll go, we'll find out. So we're gonna go inside and take a look at the thermometer for our last reading. So on our last reading of the day with direct sunlight, it is 1.10 in the afternoon and our reading is 69.8 by 94.6. That should be our peak performance of the day. So at this point, I've pretty much concluded that it most definitely does work. Um, if the overhang on my roof was a lot less, it would work better. But at this point, I think it's pretty good. Um, some follow-up things. I think I'm going to see whether I can find a couple of 12-volt fans. I work at a computer shop, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. And maybe follow it up with a basic solar panel of some sort. That way, when the sun is out, it activates the solar panel and that activates the 12 volt fans. But that's for a future video. For now, we've most definitely been able to heat the living room of the house on just passive solar heat. It's currently 52 degrees out and we're currently sitting in 71 right now inside the house easily. So. Have fun guys, thanks for watching.